Amanda, 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 Viva NCUT Viva, Viva Sasco Viva, Viva Cosas Viva, Viva YCN Viva, Viva YCN Viva, Long live ANC, Long live, Long live Cosas to Long live, Long live NCT, Long live, Long live, Long live. of land without compensation for what? Who what to expropriation of land without compensation for what? Who what to expropriation of land without compensation for what? Sa uisa umuso ga trolling sa uisa Sa uisa umuso ga trolling sa uisa Sa uisa ita so sa uisa Sa uisa ita so sa uisa Tata sa ko tata Comrades, we come here today on behalf 
of the Youth League Comrade Nahula, which who President A.B. Kuma called Ufugaiba. We are here today to come and speak to young people of Nelson Mandela, Nelson Mandela Bay and Nelson Mandela University, a prestigious university named after Nelson Mandela, the fourth president of the ANC Youth League, the first commander-in-chief of Mkoto Wesizwe, the volunteer-in-chief of the defiance campaign, accused number one in the Rivonia trial, the first black and democratically elected president of South Africa, Itela Kufaindo Daengo Yigiluto, Unelsin Holisata Mandela. That is why we are here, comrades. Comrades, when we receive an invite from SASCO in this branch, the SASCO of Kovachev Mjapilo, the SASCO of Sipuye Zuma, the SASCO of Troy Kavan, the SASCO of Wakaskina, the SASCO of Baba Alwandabe, the SASCO of Lincoln Moken, the SASCO of Nkumi Mahuman, and many other great student activists who were told we must come and speak to you, young people, about young people and the revolution. Now, Comrade Chair of the region in the ANC Youth League, this discussion is taking place at a very interesting time in the life of the ANC in general, of the ANC in particular, and society in general. It is happening at a time when young people have started to demand their rightful place in society and in the ANC Youth League. We are forcefully taking power from old people. We did it in Gaute with Comrade Jacob Kau. We did it in KwaZulu Natal with Comrade Mdumzeni Ndul. You yourself here in the home of the legends did it when I was coming to Mabuyan, Comrade to Baba Loma Digizela, who are recent leaders of the ANC Youth League, immersed in the PC, comrades. Comrades, this is something worth celebrating, and it is extremely important that we are taking this discussion here today about youth and revolution. Now, comrades, when you speak about youth and revolution, and as we celebrate the election of many young people into structures of the ANC, into taking serious positions in society. We must be mindful, Comrade Chair, that as much as history is littered with many young revolutionaries, history is also littered with many young counter-revolutionaries. You do not become a revolutionary by the mere fact of being under the age of 35 and being young. You become a revolutionary by your conduct, by your deeds, by your conviction. Comrades, not all these young people who we are saying must be elected or not all young people are revolutionary. We must appreciate that before we make colossal mistakes which will endanger the revolution. Other young people, comrades, represent the backwardness of the old guard. Other young people think, walk and talk like old people. Other young people, comrades, say it without fear or favor that they are not leading because they are capable, they are leading because they are loyal to some old people in the ANC. Other young people, comrades, say it without fear or favor that they are leading because they run successfully the errands of old people in the ANC. Some of the people we call leaders, or some of the people you call leaders, young people, are not leading because they are capable. They are leading because they can be reliably sent to fetch girlfriends for leadership, go and buy ice for leadership, go and buy whiskey for leadership. That you must know, comrades. The issue that I'm bringing here is that not all young people are revolutionary. Being under the age of 35 does not make you a revolutionary. This you must accept today as you deal with the important question of saying youth and the revolution. Comrades, this matter of young people who are revolutionary was clearly defined by the first president of the ANC Youth League, who comrade to Anthony Lambert. Who comrade to Anthony Lambert in 1947 when he wrote for Ikunta Yabantu said, we are not called to peace, comfort, and enjoyment, but to hard work, struggle, and sweat. We need young men and women of high moral stamina, integrity, of courage, and vision. These are revolutionary young people, Comrade Chair. It is young people who have high moral stamina. It is young people who are courageous. 
It is young people with wisdom. It is young people with a vision. These are young people who we can call revolutionaries. And anything else, they are not revolutionaries. They are young counter-revolutionaries. This discussion, comrades, of young people and revolutionaries was thoroughly explored in 2011 through polemics by Comrade Floyd Chivambu, Comrade Putima Namela, and Comrade uh, Lazola Damase. When they were writing for the ANC today, they discussed this matter extensively. And one side of the discussion, Comrade Chair, said that revolutions are activities of young people. And there came another perspective on the other side, we said revolutionaries are not necessarily activities of young people. Lenin taught us that revolutions are activities or festivals of the oppressed. And in my view, comrades, these things are not mutually exclusive. They are not independent of each other. If you study South Africa today, the most oppressed group of the people which we can call the rest of democracy are young people and young women in particular. So when they say that revolutions are activities of young people, they, they, this ought to be understood through a particular ideological prism that all revolutions, we are not revolutionaries because we are young. We become revolutionaries because we are oppressed and we want to liberate ourselves. Beyond that, we will not be revolutionaries. I do this, comrades, because I do not come here to address worshippers. I came here to address student activists, people who I think take the task of thinking extremely serious, people who have got the responsibility to deal with establishing new truths. Stu students are people who are tasked with the task of questioning the truths that exist today, comrades. So I'm, I'm giving you this narrative which was explored by the three leaders of the BYA at that time such that you go and research, read up, read these articles, and you are able to take your discussion forward on your own. But before I proceed, Comrade Chair of SASCO in the province of the Eastern Cape, allow me to take a tactical detour and express us and extend a sincere advice to the leadership of SASCO. And I'm glad I'm saying this in the gathering of SASCO, Comrade Chair. I come here as a former activist of SASCO and leader of SASCO that is deeply troubled by the state of our organization, Makaban. SASCO is undergoing through, through a very difficult time, Comrade Chair. When we were sitting next to you, we were joking about some of these issues, Comrades. I am deeply worried about the state of SASCO, especially the fiasco that is happening in national office and the courts. SASCO is a revolutionary organization which must be guided by revolutionary consciousness and students, leaders, with high level of consciousness. They can't at all times take decisions that are incorrect or that seek to serve this or the other individual. Comrades, as, a, as members of SASCO, you must have a full appreciation that this organization belongs to you. But most importantly, comrades of SASCO, you must appreciate that this organization does not belong to you alone. It belongs to its former members, those who led it before you, those who contributed in its building and kept it alive to this day. It also belongs to its future members, the young people who are in townships today who are hoping that SASCO will fight for free education such that they are able to access higher education. So when you kill SASCO, you are not killing your own position. You are killing a legacy of others. You are killing a future to others. So as you act in the interest of SASCO chair, as you go to the next national executive committee, convey this message. And I know that I'm not speaking on, on myself, on my behalf. I'm saying this on behalf of many other leaders of SASCO. I do not want to dwell much compared to the problems that are facing SASCO. But I want to say some of the, of the reasons, comrade chair, that we are losing campuses, it is because students are punishing us for this. Students feel extremely neglected by us. I know that it is usual, it happens in SASCO that you lose the campus this year, you win it again. It's not yet a terminal crisis. But if we do not attend to it, it will cost us dearly, and students will turn their backs against us. So for us to ensure that students do not turn their backs against us, 
We must make sure that we fix the terminal crisis or the challenges that are facing SASCO at this moment. We must make sure that students get the service they require from SASCO. Students are not interested, Comrade Chair, in our petty squabbles. You correctly said, students will vote for SASCO, students will borrow SASCO alive if SASCO champions the issue of NSFAS. If SASCO says to Minister Nale Dipando, we don't care that you appointed a fellow that we knew will fail like Ciso Nassar. What we want, Tina, is our monthly stipend and meals. That is why students will vote SASCO. Students will vote SASCO if they know that SASCO and the ANC Youth League and the YCL are at the center of the struggle that when blacks graduate, they have to go and beg for jobs in robots while white graduates move straight to managerial positions in corporate South Africa. Students will vote for SASCO if they know that SASCO is at the center of struggles to ensure that libraries and laboratories are open 24 hours a day. Not only McDonald's is open 24 hours a day. We can't be presented as a nation that is only interested in obesity and not in knowledge and generation. Comrades, students will vote SASCO if Comrade Chair, SASCO and the ANC Youth League and the YCL are at the center of the struggle of standardizing entrance requirement for honors, entrance requirement for our undergraduate degree. Why does a student who must do engineering at NMMU is required to have an APS of 32 and advance they want an MPS or APS of 42? Are you not all of you going to be engineers? Are you not all of you going to be lawyers? This thing, Comrade Chair of the APS, is done as a barrier to entry. And our next struggle must be that, that we must standardize this entrance requirement. Students will vote for SASCO if SASCO continues to champion the struggle of a central applications office. It cannot be that in this day and age, you still struggle to apply to a university. If you do not have internet, applying for a university is a nightmare. It becomes worse, Comrade Chair, because applying to universities is extremely expensive. So if you do not have money, you cannot apply to a university. So SASCO must be at the center of this struggle together with other components of the BYA. Students will vote SASCO the BYA and the BYA in general if they know that SASCO is at the center of the struggle to fight against the removal of experience and a driver's license as a requirement for a job. Comrades, there is no university that teaches you experience. There is no shop that will sell you experience. Where do corporate South Africa expect a person that comes from university to have a car and experience and a driver's license? Because those are things that you must get when you work, comrades. And some of these things, comrade chair, are extremely nonsensical. Even to be a clerk, they say they want someone who has got experience. <laughs> who on earth in modern day South Africa has not answered the phone? All of us have cell phones, we answer it every day. Hello, my name is Professor Mokako. Why is it when I must answer it at NMMU, I must be forced to go and get experience? Students will vote SASCO and they will vote the ANC Youth League. If the ANC Youth League is at the center of changing the curriculum which we are taught in universities, we are tired of being taught to kill a mocking bed. Julius Caesar, thou shall, thou do that. When we have African authors like Gungu Wanti Yongo, when we have African authors like Franz Fanon, when we have African authors like Amika Kapdan. These are the reasons, comrades. These are the reasons why students must vote SARS. I thought it is important that I pass in this deal, comrades, such that we understand that SASCO must end its struggles, SASCO must end its credentials of leading students. We can't lead students by degree, we can't lead students by a glorious history, we can't lead students by telling them that, do you know Spurious Zuma well? Do you know Floyd Kabane well? They know them all good and well, but they want to see us championing their struggles. Comrades, the, pres the honorary president of SASCO, who comrade Walter Sisulu, 
when he wrote a foreword in the book of President Anton Lembed, he said, it is the youth who have the capacity to renew the struggle, which today continues in new form, to play the time-honored role of re-examining the status quo, sometimes to the discomfort of the old guard, to renew and reinvigorate the ANC so that its grassroots members continue to play their rightful, their rightful part in democratizing our society. Close quote. This is an important lesson, comrades, to, as we examine in today's history. It is precisely this lesson that made the name of Walter Sisulu to be synonymous with both names of the Youth League and the ANC. Tata Sisulu continues to speak to us wherever he is today, and his voice has become even louder. He teaches us that to be human and to love our people and to sacrifice for and to serve them is the greatest cause we can live for. When the president of the SRC says to you that he does not sleep because he loves you, that is the greatest cause he can do. That is the most fulfilling task any student activist can do to serve the constituents which elected you. Student leaders are not elected into office to be corrupt. They are not elected into office to drive SRC cars, Comrade President. You are not elected into office to stay away from students. You are elected into office to serve these students. And how you serve these students will, will, will determine how they vote this year. So if we lose to Daso in the next coming SRC election, Comrade President, we are the first person who are going to blame. Because it will mean, in fact, we'll suspend you. We'll remove you, Comrade President. So that is what Comrade Walter Sisu. Comrade to Comrade to Moses Kotan. And I'm doing this quote, Comrades, because I was, I was requested to come and speak about young people and the revolution. Who comrade to Moses Kotana, comrade, at some point said to the youth of South Africa, it is at this hour of destiny, your country and your people need you. The future of South Africa is in your hands. It will be what you make of it. Malume Moses Kotana was affirming that revolutions are activities of young people and all societies in general pay attention to the, to the youth. For any society or nation to ignore this responsibility is to do a great harm to itself. This applies particularly to people that are struggling to break the chains of oppression. Comrades, no revolution can be victorious without the effective education, organization, and mobilization of young people into political action. It is none other than the youth, especially working class youth, who form the core army of the revolution. They are youth, their youthful energy enables them to perform great feats in the theater of battle. Their vigor enables them to be the most active transmitters of ideas and skills. Their zeal spreads into, your, into their surroundings like wildfire. So comrades, when we say Sia Uisa Umbuso we Makesa, Sia Uisa Umbuso we Olkan, we are not saying it because we hate old people. We are saying it because we want to expedite the struggle for economic freedom. When we say Sia Uisa Umbuso we Makesa, we are saying it we want to send young people who are energetic, who have got new ideas to parliament to end that sleeping therapy that is in parliament, to end that snoring competition that is taking place in parliament. That is why comrades we are saying to you, we want young people to be at the center of the revolution. Even though I'm still not sure, comrade chair, about the issue of students going to parliament. Because the task of students is to start so if you want to be a student and go to parliament, what are, you, what are you going to do? Or unless you want to affirm the dominant narrative that SASCO is led by non-students. Because if you are a student, you must be in class. What are you doing in parliament? Students must entrust their PYA partners, they must entrust the ANC they vote for to represent them in parliament. But as they do that, they must hold them accountable. The spot documents of SASCO gives you a very powerful weapon called the CC approach. You must constructively engage them when you do not agree with them and you must compliment them when you agree with them. You do not need to go to parliament. Comrades from the above, no one can contest me when I rightly claim that Comrade Walter Sisulu and Comrade Moses Kotan held young people in the highest regard 
and believed in their capabilities in resolving challenges confronting them. In their honor, the young people of South Africa carry the responsibility to examine the role played by young people today in the ANC in particular and society in general. If to see if we are living up to the expectations of these two young of these two giants. We also we must also provide comrade answers to what can be done such that we live up to these expectations. Now comrades, we, we have a crisis, comrade chair, as, as, as a generation. And comrade Khalima uh, Mutlante puts this very succinctly to say that this generation of young people whom we are speaking to here today are not interested in a glorious history. They do not want the ANC and the ANC Youth League to bask in the glory of the past, to say we are the ANC Youth League of Mandel, we are the ANC Youth League of Tam, and they liberated you. These young people here today, Comrade Chair, want an ANC Youth League that is a laboratory of ideas, an ANC Youth League that generates new ideas to improve their lives. So as the ANC Youth League, we do not have a bad right to be a revolutionary organization. We are a revolutionary organization as much as our strength as a revolutionary organization is tested when we lead credible and genuine struggles of young people. Our strength as a revolutionary organization or our status is not by degree or it is not written in our foreheads. They must see us in their daily struggles. It must be SAS, it must be SASCO, it must be the youth league, it must be the YCN that speaks against high food prices on campus. It must be SASCO, it must be the YCN, it must be the youth league that speak against the high prices of textbooks that we buy for university studies. So if we don't do that, these students will turn their backs on us. Now comrades, we, 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 we have had different definitions of what revolutions are. And by and large, Comrade Chair and Comrade Chair of the branch, I agree with you. Revolutions are about fundamental change and how societies are reorganized. And in South Africa today, if you were to start a revolution, or if you were to start to say, where do I start if I want to change how society is organized? You must deal with the issue of property relations, Comrade Chair. You must deal with the sad reality that 64% of those who live below the poverty line are black and only 1% are white. The color of poverty and underdevelopment, the color of those who still walk kilometers to fetch water, the color of those who drown in school pit toilets remains black. And the color of those who live in comfort and wealth, the color of those who are less affected by crime Leave alone the nonsense spoken by Afri Forum. These people are protected from crime comrades. They have private security companies. They live in gated communities. At large, those people are white. So if you are to change anything in South Africa today, that is where you must start. So if we as this generation, as this ANC Euclid, as this YCN, want to write the name as revolutionaries of our, of our time, this is where we must start. If we want to write the name to be young revolutionaries, we must stop using organizations like the YCN, like SASCO, like the ANC Youth League for our own upward mobility and self-enrichment. These organizations are not get-rich-quick schemes. They are organizations of the people. The ANC Youth League is not a pyramid scheme. It is an organization that is the main, that exists to service the young people of South Africa. If we want to rightly claim to be young revolutionaries, we must not be seen as representative of any faction, Comrade Chair. You must not be representative of a faction of the ANC or in the ANC Youth League. You must be representatives of the genuine hopes and aspirations of young people. Young people must know that their interests are safe in the hands of the ANC Youth League. They must know that they are safe in the interest of Comrade Kabula. They must not see Comrade Kabula as a comrade who was elected secretary and Comrade Bongani as comrade who were elected chair to negotiate for themselves jobs in the provincial legislature. They must not see yourself as comrades who were elected to negotiate yourself tenders for yourselves and the people you lead with. If we can, if we want 
to rightly claim the status of being young revolutionaries. We must be humble servants of the five million young people who are without work. If you want to rightly claim to be young revolutionaries, we must be servants of the many students who drop out for many reasons, except those who are not committed to study. If we want to claim to be young revolutionaries, we must be humble servants of the many students who do not have accommodation and are forced to sleep in libraries and bath in toilets so that they can go to class. If we want to claim to be young revolutionaries, we must be humble servants of the many students who have resorted to be prostitutes at night such that they are able to meet the high cost of living of being a student. If we want to be to claim rightly that we are young revolutionaries, we represent the future. We must be humble servants of the many young women who are forced to sleep with lecturers to pass, who are forced to sleep with the people in power to be employed in campuses and exploited. If you want to be to rightly claim that we are self humble servants, we, we, we are young revolutionaries. We must be humble servants of the many women who live in a permanent state of fear because they can be raped or killed by their boyfriends at any minute. If we want to rightly claim that we are young revolutionaries corporate, we must be humble servants of the many young people who have business ideas but do not have the money to finance these business ideas. If we want to be humble, so if we want to rightly claim to be revolutionaries, comrade chair, we must be humble servants of the many young people who want to proceed with their studies beyond the first undergraduate degree, do honors, masters, and PhD, but do not have the necessary funding to do so. If we want to rightly claim to be young revolutionaries, we must be humble servants of the many students who graduate and are forced to be casualized labor or are forced to be employed to labor brokers because the labor market is too rich. Comrades, if we want to claim to be young revolutionaries, because revolution is not about declaring comrade chair. I don't wake up and call myself a revolutionary. It is about the meaningful contribution I made in transforming society in the interest of the majority in South Africa or according to the theory of the National Democratic Revolution, we say Africans in particular, blacks in general and Africans in particular. That is what revolution is about. If you want to rightly claim comrades to be young revolutionaries, we must heighten the demand for the nationalization of mines and industrialization of our economy. Comrades, it is a known secret that the most exploitative industry in South Africa is the minerals and energy complex. If we do not want to see another Marikana in the near future, we must make sure that after this conference of the ANC Youth League, we heighten the demand for the nationalization of mines such that we are able to industrialize in South Africa, such that we are able to beneficiate and create jobs. It is extremely absurd, comrades, that in South Africa we mine gold, in South Africa we mine diamond, but all the goods that with the finished product come here as processed from another country. It means that our mineral resources are creating jobs in London and other countries which we export to. And what does that do, comrades? It leaves our people without jobs. We must make sure, comrades, that we force the state to use locally produced goods. It can't be, comrades, that the ANC government, when they are under siege, we still claim that we are attacked by imperial forces. Donald Trump recently insulted us for, for advancing a correct policy position of expropriation of land without compensation. But to your surprise, Comrade Chair, National Treasury and other government departments continue to have contracts with Vodacom, which is owned by Vodawell, a firm that is based in British, the house of imperialism. And we are not using Telco, a South African-owned mobile network. That is absurd, Comrade. How do you feed a wolf 
to come uh, to come and eat you? How do you say a wolf and a sheep must go and graze together without taking out the sharp teeth of the wolf? So some of the things which students must fight for, some of the things which as young people we must fight for, is that the state must start using locally produced goods. Comrades, as we move forward, some of the things we must continue to fight for is the issue of a state-owned bank. We need a state-owned bank, comrades. That bank is what will allow you to be able to start your own businesses. Because many of you have got great business ideas, but you do not have the money to fund it. Many of you want to proceed with your studies beyond the first degree, but you cannot proceed because you do not have the money to proceed with it. So when we have this state-owned bank, it will give you these loans for free. Those of you who are already working will know that the cost of buying a house or getting a bond in South Africa is very difficult. This state-owned bank must ensure that young black professionals do get bonds at favorable prices and they are not discriminated for based on their race, on their gender and creed. Because the reality in South Africa today, comrades, is that when you apply for a bond, they consider how much of a risk are you. One of the things they consider is your academic qualifications and probabilities of getting a next job if you were to be out of a job. And according to the unemployment statistics, the most affected by unemployment are black people in general and black women in particular. So for black women, it is extremely difficult to get a bond because according to banks, they say you are a risk because if you lose a job, you are not likely to get a job quick. So those are some of the things which we must take to National Treasury, we must take to Comrade Lisitia Kaneahu in the Reserve Bank, this transformation of the banks. Comrade, some of the things which we must push for as a generation and as young people is that we must not compromise on expropriation of land without compensation. And comrades, we must make it clear, comrades, we must make it clear that we do not consider, we do not take serious the nonsensical views of this company that was, that was contracted by parliament to, to consider the input, which has told us that almost 60% of South Africans do not want expropriation of land without compensation. My grandmother wants land, but she cannot read, she cannot write, she did not write a WhatsApp, she did not send an email, but she tells me every day that she wants land. So this issue of land coverage is extremely important. We want this land for agricultural purpose and food security. We want to ensure that we produce a new generation of farmers and those farmers must be young black women. Because the reality is that in South Africa, the land is worked by black women. So why is it that we are told that if you give black people land, there will be food insecurity? Yet the people who mine, yet the people who work the land on a daily people, on a daily basis are black people. The only thing that they don't have is this short khakis comrade chair. So that what we are going to do. We are just going to give you land and give you a pair of those short khakis and you become owner. Such that you are able to such that you are able to farm and produce food for ourselves. Comrade Chair, we need this land for development purposes. When, when you are supposed to build, you know that one of the struggles of such for Comrade Jefferson was the building of a university in Northern Cape and in Bumala. When the battle of the university in Northern Cape and Pumalanga was won, there was then a struggle of finding land. And when we check where can we find suitable land, some of the areas where we wanted, we had identified land to build these universities, it belonged to people who have never set a foot in South Africa. They have only seen that land on Google Maps, but they own it in South Africa. And we can't build a university, we can't build a hospital, we can't build a clinic, we can't build a school, because a person who is in Sudan
Saudi Arabia, a person who is in China, owns land and has never come to South Africa. That is nonsensical and must come to an end. The land shall be shared amongst those who work it and the state shall be allowed to expropriate land for development purposes. Comrades, comrades, we can no longer run away. Comrades, we can no longer run away from the truth that there was a declaration of free education in universities. We welcome, we welcome this progressive announcement, comrades. But we are saying to the leadership of the ANC, President Matamela, Comrade Naledi Pandu, the students of South Africa have not started feeling this free education. Where they are, students of South Africa, in their majority, know the pain of being locked out of their flats because they did not pay, because NSFAS has not given them their money on time. Where they are, the students of South Africa know the painful experience of failing a test, the first test in every semester, because NSFAS did not give them money for textbooks on time. Where they are, the students of South Africa know the pain of going, of going to bed with a hungry stomach, because